Hello, my name is Seungi Han. I'm a small girl from Korea and the first author of this talk. It's my first time at DEF CON, so I'm very nervous and so excited. Anyway, the title of this talk is UDS on Canotex Discovering Safety Critical Risk by Fuzzing. In this presentation, I will talk about the weak point that I found in the latest EV models by fuzzing test. Before the presentation, let me introduce ourselves. We are all security researchers at AutoCrypt. AutoCrypt is a mobility security company. Nowadays, we are focusing on vehicle security. With the 2020 WP.29, it's a car cybersecurity rules. All car makers must get CSMS certification. So, we have been doing fudging tests with many OEMs and tier suppliers. During the fudging test, I found some strange behavior in the car. The moving car was stopped or it didn't move. This video is showing the weak point that I found in the latest EV model. Let's take a look. Uh, can we play a sound? Uh. Okay, let's see one more. The moving car was stopped. Are you interested? <laughs> now, I, I will explain why this happened. So please pay attention. Contents are as follows. First, I will explain UDS and fuzzing. Then, I will explain what the type of attacks that I did and explain how to prevent this weak point. I told you, I found a weakness during the fudging test. The moving car was stopped or didn't move at all. I will explain how these problems are connected to UDS and what caused them. First, UDS is a protocol used for communication with vehicles. It is defined in ISO 14229. I don't have a car, but if you have one, you probably go to a repair shop when something goes wrong with your car, right? The tool used to find out what's wrong is UDS. During this process, the diagnostic tool and the car communicate using UDS to determine the problem. As I mentioned, UDS services perform important functions, so not everyone can use these services freely. You can see some of the security measures on this slide. I will give you more detail later. To ensure that UDS is well protected, many car companies do fudging tests. Fuzzing is a testing method where random or unusual data is fed into a system to find problems. The goal of this test is to see how the system behaves under stress and to find security issues. In the vehicle industry, we commonly do black box fuzzing using commercial fuzzers. There are many talks about can UDS and UDS fuzzing in CHV. Check out those talks for more details. During the UDS fuzzing test, we discovered something is wrong. The vehicle malfunctioned with two services. The first is ECU reset and the second is communication control. Based on these findings, we made real-world attack scenarios. The first scenario is 
sudden stop. And the second is disabling of vehicle usage. Before the explaining the attacks, you need to understand the two services. The first service is ECU Reset. It is used to reset the ECU. It is often used for troubleshooting or testing purposes. This is the actual message that I did. You can perform heart reset with the first sub function. This is the heart reset message. And you can perform soft reset with the third sub function. It's the soft reset message. With the ECU reset message, you can stop the engine's vehicle's engine. There are two scenarios that I did. The first is sending an ECU reset message to a moving vehicle to make it stop suddenly. And second scenario is vehicle disabling. Continuously sending ECU reset message to disable the vehicle's functions. The root cause of these issues is that EC reset is not disabled in drive mode. Normally, this service is restricted during driving because it can be dangerous. And ISO 14229 says that the condition of server is ignition is on and system not be in an operational mode. I tested this on a new latest EV SUV model. And the target ECU is the gateway control unit. I conducted the test while the vehicle was driving. Here are the attack steps. Connect the laptop to the vehicle's OBD port using a CAN interface. And just start the engine. Then we send a message and observe the vehicle. It's that simple. This photo shows the hardware setup. The OBD cable is connected to the OBD port and the laptop is connected via the CAN interface. The CAM bus parameters are set to standard values. The first scenario is sudden stop scenario. Set up the hardware setting and just we send the issue recent message to moving vehicle. Then the moving vehicle comes to a sudden stop. Let's check it out through the video. The video is very short, so watch it carefully. Um, no sounds, okay? Let's see one more. We sent a message, then the moving car was stopped. I'm gonna play one more. This time, please look at the cluster. After the message, the cluster was turned off. It was rebooted, but the car shut down. The video on the left let the video on the left shows the exterior. You can see the car moving back and forth and back and forth, which shows that the brake pedal was not pressed. 
This attack, this attack can cause mechanical failure or damage. At high speeds, this could lead to serious accidents. The second scenario is vehicle disabling. It's similar to the first scenario, but in this case, the issue reset message is sent continuously. The vehicle cannot be controlled until the attack stops. The vehicle starts and the message is sent continuously. The vehicle will not start and the gear shifting is disabled. The vehicle is completely uncontrollable. Let's watch it one more time. Again, the cluster, please look at the cluster. The cluster screen turns off and multiple warnings appear. Due to the continuous attack, the cluster shuts down and the vehicle comes uncontrollable. The driver appears to very com confused. Here are the logs of the CU reset attacks. Some parts are blurred for security reasons. You can see the logs of both hard reset and soft reset. To summarize the CU reset attack, in drive mode, you can stop the engine by using EC reset message. Continuous attacks can prevent the driver from controlling the vehicle. Also, the cluster will reboot and appear multiple warning. These attacks can be very dangerous on the road. Therefore, the service, this service must be operated only in not ready state. Here is the first service description. How is it? It's right, it's good? Okay, now I will explain the second service. The second service is communication control. This service is it is used to control the communication functions of the ECU. This is the actual message that I did. And also, you can set the control type using the sub functions. The strange behavior appears with sub function 1 and 3. Use sub function 1 to enable Rx and disable Tx of the ECU. Um, this is the message for sub function 1. And you also use sub function 3 to disable Rx and Tx. This is the message for sub function 3. You can control the issue's communication type using this method. An attacker can disable TX and RX of the ECU by transmitting communication control message. I performed two scenarios. The first is brief pause and sudden movement, and second, Scenario is vehicle disabling. The root cause of this strange behavior is that communication control is not disabled in drive mode. And also, this service does not require security authentication. The first scenario is brief pause and sudden movement. 
Set the hardware setting and set the gear to drive. Then just resend the message. The driver, driver will re release the brake pedal to move forward. But the vehicle does not move for a few seconds even when the foot is taken off the brake pedal in drive mode. After a few seconds, the vehicle suddenly moves. Okay, let's check it out through the video. I'm sorry too, the sound is not playing. Um, I'm gonna play one more. Please check the cluster. The gear is set to drive, then we send a message. The vehicle doesn't move even when the brake pedal is released. Then, after a few seconds, it suddenly moves. It's an interesting symptom. I will explain the second scenario. The second scenario is vehicle disabling attack. It's similar to the first, but this time we send message continuously. When attack messages are sent in succession, the driver loses complete control over the vehicle. Let's take a look. We sent message continuously. Yeah, the driver sets the gear to drive, then we sent a message. We sent message continuously. The scariest part is that we don't know when the, when the attacker will stop. When we stop the attack, the vehicle suddenly starts moving. If the driver is pressing the gas, it's very, very dangerous. Okay, let me summarize the communication control attack. This type of attack can disable the transmission and reception of the ECU. As shown in the previous video, it can control the vehicle either briefly or continuously. Unlike, unlike on previous attack ECU reset, this attack doesn't turn off the ECU. So, when the attack stops, the vehicle could suddenly move. Therefore, this service should be operated only in not ready. Here are the logs of communication attacks. Some parts are blurred for security reasons too. So, how could these attacks happen in real life? You might wonder. Here are some examples. First, an attacker secretly entered the vehicle and connect the uh, uh, wireless OBD device. Some OEMs use wireless diagnostic tools. Since drivers usually don't check the OBD port, the vehicle could be unprotected. And second, 
Attacks can happen from a short distance using wireless communication like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Some OEMs use Wi-Fi to connect diagnostic tools. Vehicles without security measures are very vulnerable to these type of attacks. That's why such attacks could happen at any time. So I'll suggest two countermeasures for these attacks. The first, important services like EC reset and communication control must be operated only in not ready state. It's meaning when the engine is off. The second, these services should only be possible after security access authorization is granted. I shortly mentioned the security access service earlier. Um, to time restrictions, um, I will explain just one thing about the security access authorization. There is the security access service. This service uses a seed and key to provide security procedure. It only unlocks security when the correct seed and the key. If authentication fails, it locks the ECU for a certain time to enhance security. There is also, when connecting a diagnostic tool, some OEMs use security algorithms. And another measure is the gateway safety function. Um, previously, various data could be accessed without filtering, but now the gateway filters the data, allowing only certain information to be accessed. So I discovered this weak point in April. After conducting additional tests, I reported on June 10th. But I was told that the vulnerability is not actionable in reality and that it works as, it as designed. However, I still believe is, it is a weakness. I believe that after sharing my presentation today, you will agree with me. Okay, finally, let me summarize. Some diagnostic services can have a significant impact on vehicle driving. If an attacker transmits the diagnostic message to driving vehicle, a serious accident may occur. So security for diagnostic services is essential. That's all my, for my presentation. Thank you for listening. OK, my name is Seung Yi Han. I'm from South Korea, not North. Thank you.